you. Um, in reflecting on many thoughts that have been expressed this morning and some parts of yesterday, um, in the United States, as far as I know, something like 17% of, of a person, average person's income is spent on health. It's an inflated amount. Obviously, we are aware of the differences between Europe, continental Europe and US. But the point I'm trying to get at is health is something that people take, personal health is something that people take seriously. Uh, and there's a disconnect, it seems to me, in some ways, and I'm not sure I can put my finger on it at today's discussion, between the health that is being affected, personal health that is being affected by collective misjudgments. Other, the totality of mistakes are affecting me, and I then worry about it versus things that I can do to improve my own health if I need a pill or wh whatever I'm offered. And I think we should ask ourselves, we are in great agreement here all through about how awful it is. And yet, how come um, not much is done? Um, where if it comes to health, if, it's, if, you recognize, if an individual recognizes a particular thing he or she does is affecting his or her personal health, there's some, at least some, unless there's cognitive dissonance, of course, yes. goes without saying. I'm correcting for those kinds of biases. And I think we are missing one item, which is collective action is hard. And one reason to, to undertake, and one reason uh, some of us have been spending some time saying, why don't we use the internet and the Facebook and the, is that it facilitates collective action. And perhaps we ought to distinguish between self-interest and the self-interest that ir arises out of common, uh, a, a, communi a, a collective action, as it were. Yes. Great. Well, thank you, Fana, for uh, an excellent presentation. And thank you as well for uh, honing the focus that's been developing today on the, the city as potentially the level of action. And I, I think it's, it's clear that uh, innovation in cities in Latin America and other parts of the world has been a feature of the world today and that it may be a little bit easier to combine political will and technical innovation at the level of city rather than country. Uh, albeit there are examples of uh, small countries such as Uruguay or maybe even big states such as California where these same factors come together. But, but I think uh, perhaps we need to think more about cities as the level in which we address climate change. And I wonder if you can reflect on uh, what that might explicitly look like, how we can mobilize action at the level of cities to potentially trigger broader societal action. Yeah. Uh, just a quick comment. I think the, uh, your position is very, very nice. This uh, is uh, um, what we need to learn how to communicate to, for the risk communication for the, uh, especially for the health risks of caused by climate change. Uh, we got a lot of funding uh, based on our research, but we cannot translate uh, this for the impact to the uh, policy makers and for the public and uh, even for ourselves. So uh, I think this is uh, um, a very good uh, um, position. Your, your talk is very, very nice. And uh, we, uh, I have a proposal so for our uh, uh, climate change researcher or the scientist, we need to learn <laughs> that the how to communicate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I actually see it an incredible line running all, all through all of all of these questions. It's about uh, the importance of collaborative integral thinking and action. Um, so that to uh, address uh, Professor uh, Dasgupta's uh, first 
question that self-interest and collective interest begin to lose themselves in one another. Um, the, the city is the scale at which I think that happens most naturally. I mean, I, I think that's why mayors are so successful. It's sort of where the rubber hits the road in governance. They have to learn how to mobilize action very quickly and, and expeditiously, and they're very good at this. I think cities also enable people to see the immediate impacts of their collaborative work together. And the research that I'm most familiar with on changing attitudes and behaviors, it's likelier to happen at local scales in participation with individuals that you know or share common interests with in a, in a community. Um, and and I, I think that mayors have, have been effective. There are many examples in the US and around the world of mayors that have actually created laboratories in their own offices that are cross-sector working together on urban problems. Um, that can be mobilized very easily into the city. Uh, these are sort of nodes of networks and cities that come together working inside of a municipality and have agility to move because the mayors are, you know, you know empowering them to do so and can, and, uh, can act uh, 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 very quickly. Um, in our city, uh, you know, the university has taken a very active role in mobilizing community health projects. And I think universities everywhere can play that role at local scale. So cities, uh, again, become a kind of canvas for low cost field research and field education opportunities for students. Uh, at least that's been the case uh, for us. And on the idea of, of science scientists learning how to communicate, I mean, that's really the whole spirit behind these integral projects in thinking about climate change because we all have partial pieces of the solution. Just because our world and our universities where I come from and the way governments are organized, they're very siloed. and We don't know how to communicate, communicate across disciplinary uh, boundaries uh, across professional boundaries. We often use different languages to say the same thing. Um, meetings like this and other fora like this enable us to learn from one another so that I can learn from the scientist as I, as I, you know, as I develop public policy proposals and the scientist can integrate uh, public health uh, understanding into their technologies. And it's it just, we need, we need more cross fertilization and opportunities for doing that. So I appreciate your question. Thank you. I just want to thank you so much for the presentation. And thank you for being a, um, for appreciating the need for practical communication. I know that was hard for you, as you acknowledged. I, I, I chuckled at that because a lot of people who are already charged up about this don't get the idea of how to bring new people in. And the one thing I, I couldn't disagree with anything you said, the one thing I wanted to add is that there's a dimension in which people are concerned about opportunity and thinking about their children. So not just their own well-being, but thinking of what the opportunities are for their children. I find that that's a really profound way to reach people uh, on climate change because um, they all want, they, they want their, have, their children to have as good an opportunity as they have. And so there's a future element to it to that I would just add to what you said, but thank you very much for, uh, for that. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Foreman. I, I really uh, appreciated the political and moral theory um, component of this, and I was struck by um, your focus on moral realism, and especially in the United States, the context I know best, um, the pervasive culture of individualism, of, of moral subjectivity, um, personalized notions of truth, um, which are in some ways contrast to realism that you, you mentioned, and these have, you know, deep connections in in quote unquote uh, postmodern theory, but I think the effects that we see, you know, there's a lot of distrust in political, uh, religious. So, so she has to come here and not have time. Tell me, how long is your contact Okay, yeah. Well, basically, how do you bring the moral realism to bear in this context? Sorry. Oh, yeah. You cannot do this. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, Fana, thank you for your wonderful presentation. And I just wanted to add, in, in your connection of climate action and public health. Sorry, sorry, the observer. Oh. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay. 
Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention that the American Public Health Association meeting is about to start with a focus on climate change. Um, and that we still need to rely on our communication partners, though, because in public health, we've often not been successful at our campaigns because we haven't reached out to the communication leaders. And some of our campaigns that have been more successful, like a, a CDC campaign around physical activity and kids called VERB, it was by partnering with companies that focus on communication and messaging that we were able to get the public health message. So I love the connectivity between the climate action and the public health, but we both have to hang our hats with the, those who know how to communicate so we can, we can make changes. Thank you. I, and only I want to congratulate you because this idea to raise the importance of the mayors is very central. According to our experience, we organize many meetings with the mayors because they are in relation directly with the people and no more the other politicians, the, the, the real situation of the, of the people, and also these problems. I completely agree, and we try to, to, to go in this, in this direction. Thank you. Thank you, Monsignor, for that encouragement. I think, I think that, that's very uh, inspiring. Um, on the question of the intergenerational, so when, when we speak about climate justice, people who in the sort of climate justice discussions, we talk about intragenerational, intragenerational versus intergenerational impacts. So intra being you know, impacts that happen right now, particularly to the most vulnerable, and inter intergenerational uh, 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 impacts that happen to our children and our children's children. And there was actually an interesting discussion yesterday about how effective thinking about the future is to motivating change now. I think when that future involves your own children, it's probably more compelling than when it involves somebody else's children down the road. So that's, that's, probably, uh, that's probably right. Um, and on the, on the issue of communication, bringing these two bodies together for the purpose of communicating the urgency of climate change is brand new territory. Right. So it, it's, an import, it's important now understanding how powerful a lever public health can be to figure out how to do it most effectively, and that requires entirely new coalitions of people uh, on how to, I wouldn't know the first thing, but there are people who obviously need to figure that out. <laughs>